Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali-31. Our last episode ended with a cloud giant stunning Harris the Mage and Stance, Grish, and Yolanda Two Blades stuck between the Blue Giant and Morgor the Hill Giant. Things are grim as none of them are at full strength, but freedom is only a few yards away in the form of an open ocean. We return as the giants close in on the group. I'm sorry! yelled Grish. I'm sorry, Yolanda. You never should have been removed from the guard. Their backs against each other as they attempted to fend off the pair. She yelled out, I know, you were a horse's ass. Redeem yourself by killing something. The two then split off with Grish moving towards the hill giant and Yolanda pairing up with Brother Stance against the larger blue cloud giant. For Bacchus! came a yell from above. A metal-clad warrior jumped off an outcropping with his outstretched blade. Everyone was caught off guard by the flying warrior, and the hill giant attempted to swat the knight out of midair. The glancing blow was enough to move Omel's blade from the fatal shot of a neck to the shoulder, stabbing the hill giant, but not fatally. Omel careened off the side of the cave and landed hard onto the solid floor and lay motionless. Anger flushed into the face of the cloud giant as he reached down to grab the monk as he performed a mid-air flying kick and sw the giant swung his other arm toward Yolanda. The female rolled out of the way and slashed using both short swords into the creature's arm dousing her with green blood. The enormous creature yowled in pain and dropped stance on the top of the downed mage. It pulled back its grish-sized fist and prepared to blast Yolanda into dust. And as the arm moved forward, a look of immense pain crossed its face and the creature doubled over in pain. Two large open wounds were visible in its back and green blood spewed openly. The creature pulled back its arm and finished the punch on Yolanda hitting her squarely in the chest and sending her skittering across the stone floor and into the water where the boat was moored. As she disappeared below the shallow water, two bolts struck the creature in the face. The magic missile struck true and blinded the creature. The monk again launched himself as a human projectile, striking the creature in the groin area as the diminutive Phidias pranced around from behind the figure. Armed with a pair of daggers, the gnome was a whirling dervish of activity as he sliced every portion of the creature that he could, including a deftly placed blow to the neck of the bent over creature. A look of horror crossed the face of the giant as it reached up its hand. Fog began to fill the chamber, but stopped as the cloud giant took its last breath. Across the cave, Grish was pounding the life out of the injured hill giant as Omel lay on the floor next to it. The last giant raised its arm, attempting to defend itself, but the gash delivered by the knight prevented full extension. The cleric battered away the arm and struck a final blow, sending the hill giant to the great beyond. Grish slumped against the dead body, exhausted and panted heavily. Harris and Stance limped over to the water's edge looking frantically for Yolanda. Stance dove in and was underwater for nearly a minute before reappearing above the waterline. He struggled and appeared to be pulling something. Harris reached into the water, fumbling for the cargo the monk was pulling. He connected with Yolanda's armor and heaved hard, pulling her head above water and onto the stone floor. Struggling against their injuries, the pair pulled and tugged the lifeless body of the fighter onto the dry floor. A few minutes of silence followed, with Yolanda finally coughing up a large volume of water. Brother Stance rolled her onto her side where she continued to leak the water. 
Phineas the rogue had run to the other side of the cavern and checked on Omel first and then over to an exhausted Grish. Blood was streaming into the cleric's eyes from a head wound, stinging them as the gnome checked him out. <sighs> Good to see you, my little friend, gasped the Zenobian. Friend? That giant must have really clobbered you, Grish. The gnome wiped the blood from the cleric's eyes and continued to check him for serious wounds. You really went to town on that giant, big guy, he mocked. Did he do something to piss you off? A weak smile crossed the cleric's face, and then he slowly dipped into unconsciousness. A golden warrior, shimmering in light, stood above Omel as he kneeled reverently. I am yours to take, said the knight. The wordless deity stood in judgment for the knight as Omel bowed his head. Rise, Sir Omel. I still have need of your services, as do your associates. The knight raised his head, but continued to avert his gaze. Bacchus, tell me. Guide me to your wishes. I am your servant. I am yours to command. Moments of silence seemed like hours to the warrior. He finally looked up and witnessed the golden warrior had raised the blade towards the fighter, and the loyal follower felt himself being pushed back into the darkness. Omel reached out his arm for the deity, but began to move backwards faster and faster into the darkness. His chest felt heavy, and he gasped for breath. Blinking his eyes, he woke up into the cave where he had fallen. As he took in his surroundings, he observed his associates sitting around a fire talking. Brother Stance shook his head and spoke with Phidias, who was perched on a blanket covering the head of the blue cloud giant. Okay, so you mean to tell me that you encountered nothing from the time of the cave-in until we arrived here? The gnome shrugged his shoulders and looked nonplussed. Nothing. We found some food on the giant we were fighting, but most of his stuff was blocked by the rubble. Then we took what clothes he had and made torches out of them. Oh, Mel had hurt his leg pretty badly, but he refused to use any healing, saying he was saving it up for when we really needed it. The jackass slowed us down, and if he wouldn't have been so stubborn, we would have been here a lot sooner. Phineas continued. I'm amazed you guys got to see a real gargoyle. I thought those things were just fantasy. Kind of surprised you uh, survived it all, considering your obvious limitations. A bandaged Grish asked him what limitations he was referring to, and Phidias hopped off his perch from the giant's head to give the cleric some food. Why, not having me around to save the day, obviously. The group laughed heartily, and the rogue noticed Omel stirring. Brave Sir Knight, welcome back to the land of the living. The group hobbled over to where Omel had been carefully laid out and checked on him. Stop, stop it, you mother hens, said the knight as he waved them away. He reconsidered their attentions and promptly thanked them. What happened? he inquired. Yolanda answered with her chest wrapped tightly in bandages. Well, you've been out for two days, and quite frankly, we could all use your healing touch. The knight reached out, but his hands were put down to his sides. Relax, Omel. I was only kidding, was her response. Let's get you some food. Harris handed over some strange rations to the knight. We have food? he asked. The group shook their heads in the affirmative. Quite a lot, said Brother Stance. It appears the giant force is just a scouting party. But because of their size, they need a lot of food. There is plenty to go around. A battered Grish smiled broadly and announced, Oh yeah, and we have this. Proudly showing off a large stone wrapped in silver bands. Is... is that the... fumbled Omel. Grish nodded, still smiling, and pro-offered the item to the knight. Sir Omel, meet the heart of the golem. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.